Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do and what you're about to speak and what you're about to, to act on uh, due to this sermon. Help me say what you want me to say and help me do what you what you've asked of me today. Help us to hear you in everything we do, in every step we make. Lord God, I just praise you. Speak to me, speak through me. Holy Spirit, hide me behind the cross. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, I was talk, I was watching um, the Whitney Houston uh, mo movie, I Want to Dance with Somebody, I had uh, bought it off of uh, the TV because I really wanted to see this movie and uh, so I treated myself and I bought it. It was a good movie. It was a really good movie. It told about her life and really well done. Um, but, um, I, I had a strange thought. There was a scene at the end of the movie where she's walking through the hotel. There's, um, someone, um, she's signing fans' autographs. And there, there's someone at the desk that said, you're the greatest of all time, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, she said, thank you, and all of that. And, and I had the strangest thought, because this was after all the drugs and everything. And, um, I said, I said, if I could teleport myself back to that moment, in that moment where she's in the hotel and it's go it going to be the last few hours of her life, instead of saying, uh, Whitney, 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 and screaming and all that. I think I would have sang to her, um, I don't feel no ways tired by Mary Mary. Um, and because I thought, you know, I thought she was in so much pain, she had come through so much, yes, and she, she is a celebrity, yes, rich and a lot of money, yes, but she was in so much pain, and the thing about pain, it doesn't care about economic status or tax brackets or color of skin or anything like that. Um, I said, I would just say, girl, keep going, keep moving, keep, don't give up, you've come so far. Now, of course, I would never be there, or whatever, but, but that brought me to what's going on at, in the royal family right now. Now, I'm not going to go into that or whatever, but I just, instead of seeing a king and two princes, I see father and sons at war, and that's what gets me, because there's so much pain there. It's past a king and two princes. All I, all I see there is pain. And, um, I was watching as well the, um, a Alec, 
Murdoch trial. And I was watching um, Paul, which was the son who died, and his mother, they were killed. But I was watching Paul's ex-girlfriend, and I saw how much pain she was in. And I saw how depressed she was. I was looking at her face in the next Netflix documentary. I was looking at her face going, oh my God, I wish I could put my, my arms around that girl because she lost her best friend in a boating accident. She lost her um, boyfriend, um, in a shooting, and, and she must be so broken. I said all of that for, about Whitney, about the, the, the royal family, and the young lady to say that pain doesn't care who you are. Pain doesn't care if it will, if you're white or if you're black or if you're whatever. It's just packaging, really. And I hear a lot of people say, I want to do things for our community. When they usually say our community, they mean cultural community. They mean black community. They mean white community. But what I'm coming to now is that the human community needs help. The human community right now, guys, is struggling. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're just black, white, Latino, we're all struggling. We may not all be struggling in the same ways, but we're all struggling in some ways. It's our responsibility as the church to take the hurting, to take the broken, to take the um, people where they are and say, here, not even here, Jesus or whatever, not first. Um, you do that after, but here are my arms to hold you. Here are my arms to, um, here is, here are my ears to listen to you. Here are my ears to, um, here, here is, here are my words of compassion to keep you up. We're so focused on the covering of a person. Oh, I want to help this community, or I want to help that community. You know which community I want to help? The human community. I don't care if you're black, white, gay, straight, whatever. As long as you're, as long as you are born, as long as you're human, you deserve love and respect and care and then we can talk about Jesus then we can talk about how kind and loving our Jesus is like like people don't need to hear Jesus they need to see Jesus they need to see Jesus in your actions in in your mannerisms the way you are at work, the way you are with people. Because I'm telling you, rich or poor or whatever, everybody's hurting in some way. Every, everybody's going through jo joy in some way. Everybody's going through pain. Everybody has a part of their life that is working well. We're all a part of this human family. And I think if the human family is hurting, we all as humans 
need to step up and say, what can we do? We need to stop fighting with each other and loving each other, basically, as, as white and it goes past white or, white or black, gay and straight or whatever. It goes to human. And I think when you start with the human family, that's where Christ can show through. Because he, he didn't die for black people. He didn't die for white people. He didn't die for Mexican people. He didn't die for transgender people. He didn't die for gay people. He didn't die for all of those people. He died for the human. He died for all of us. And yes, we all have struggles. We all have sin. We all have things that are going well. We all have things that are going not so well. We all have pain, we all have joy, we all have this and that, and sometimes, most times, we have a time in our life that is um, painful, a, a certain other part of our lives at the same time could be full of joy and prosperity and flourishing. But we need to start caring about the human family. I'm tired of hearing people um, saying, I'm working for this community. I'm working for that community. And I understand that I really do. But I think if you can understand and strip it down to just people, to just white people and black people, and if we could come together as a human family, that's and really show Jesus without without saying a word, people would flock to us. Like I, I always say to people, uh, I always say this. I said to the Lord, if people knew you like I knew you, they would want you so bad. <laughs> they would want you so bad because it's so wonderful to know the Lord. And you know what? I don't have to say, you know what? Jesus loves you all the time or quote scripture. I just need to be there for a friend who just lost somebody or somebody that's struggling with identity issues or somebody that's just lost their job or even being excellent on your workplace at your workplace can show Jesus. It's not it's not about what you say. It's about who you are in your actions. Are you a are you a man or woman of your word, or do you just are do you just um um pass the buck off at work or you know um make your coworkers do what you what you know is your job, and you say oh I need to go to church. If, if your attitude is like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, um, quiet quit and just say, oh, I just, and you're telling your co-workers about, oh, do you want to come to this thing, this Bible study or whatever they're having at your church? That. You can't do that. They'll laugh at you. They're like saying, because they're looking at who you are. And you're saying, you want me to come to your church? Are you kidding? Um, and, you're, and you're not there. You don't help out where you can. The Lord wants us to be a part 
of the human family to come together as, as humans and help each other. Um, I was kind of in a mood the other day because there's, there's one church that started doing something and then I see another church online wanting to do the same thing and I was like, okay, why are you guys doing two? doing the same thing, but two different churches doing the same thing. I said, I said to myself, you guys know each other. You guys love each other. You guys talk on the phone probably all the time. Why can't you, like, if you know that one church is doing something he, our, our church started something and your church wants to do it, instead of doing two separate things, two separate places, why not call each other and say, hey man, can we join your team? Can my team join your team and we can join forces together? Since we're all, it's the same price, same God, same Savior, we're were worshiping and this like I just don't get it like so same thing I was listening to a pastor and he explained it like this it's like one person opens a, a patty shop there and the other person opens their patty shop across the street instead of coming together and say hey man you can we do this together? Can can my gifts and my skills jo join with your gifts and your skills? We need to join together, literally. That's the only way we're going to conquer this world. Because no ministry, I don't care how big you are, or how influential you are, or how this you are, how that you are, um, I think can conquer the world, but together we can do it. Together we can do it. And it, it's going to be wonderful. And the, and the Lord is calling for uncommon ministry. I said this before, the Lord is wanting to speak, to do, to rule, to, to do everything in a totally different way than he's ever done it before. And he's calling for those who will dare to trust him and follow him into uncommon ministry. He, the Lord spoke very powerfully to me the other day and told me some things personally about my destiny for preaching that had me on the floor. I, I was so, I was so floored. He's like, you see things in uncommon ways. You see me in uncommon ways. You see me in the movies you watch. You see me in books you read. You, you can do that. And, and that is uncommon ministry. And uncommon ministers will use the tools that God has given them, the place that God has placed them to minister his word. And he's saying, with this new generation of ministers, he's saying, he's saying the Bible is not irrelevant. It is still relevant, but it's only the jumping off point. He's like, there's more I want to reveal 
that I couldn't reveal to Peter, that I couldn't reveal to Paul, because they didn't have the technology we do, or the social media we do, or the advancements that we, we do. But he's like, I want to reveal those to people who are unafraid and people who will listen to me. He's like, the, he's only part of my revelation. It is my revelation, yes, but it's only part of it. He's like, I am speaking through, di through all kinds of different means, but the church is not listening because they're so focused on getting a catchy sermon. She, he's like, he's like, time out for catchy sermons and all that stuff. He said, my people need my word in a way that they can understand it, in a way that they can grasp it. He said, people are dying without me every day and it's time for my men and women to rise up and minister in uncommon ways. And the uncommon ways he will have you minister depends on where he's placed you, depends on the gifts he's given you, depends on your bents and your personality. Cause his word never changes, but the way he, but the expression of his word uh, does. The principles don't change, but the people um, that that bring forth his word do. And he's like, dare to come out of the box of Sunday and preach by word in different and unique ways. And it will still be my word, but it may not be even using the Bible in the traditional way. It may be using a real estate, or maybe using uh, environment, it may be using whatever space you're in to preach my word. Is get ready for the tidal wave. He's like, get, he's like, I am getting ready to show forth my glory in a way that, the, that my body has never seen and she is getting ready to rise up it's not like am i ready it's more like are you ready for what i'm going to do he says take your positions and rise up and he says yes it will be fraught with pain it will be fraught with you losing friends. It will be fraught with people laughing at you, people not understanding you, people saying, this is not ministry, this is not God. But he's like, trust me, it is. And, and use the tools and the language in your industry. Whatever industry I placed you in, use it. And know that I've placed you in it for, for a reason to take up dominion in that industry. Whatever industry it is, know that you are designed to rule with love and compassion. You are designed to rule places and industries, not people. I was listening to Michael Todd the other day, his, um, his Kingdom series, uh, and he says, and he said that, he said, you are designed to rule places, not people. And it, we've, we've taken dominion to real, to say that we are designed 
to rule people and we and we and we take that rule rulership to mean dictatorship. It's not a dictatorship. It's leadership with compassion, with love, with caring. And and when you lead with those things, it's so it's so strong and people follow those things when you lead with those things. Um, compassion, love, and caring. Uh, the Lord, the Lord is really doing some awesome things in this moment of time, and He's saying, "Church, I, I've been saying, get ready for years, but now I'm going to ask, are you ready?" He said, "The time for getting ready is over." Says, I'm going to ask now, are you ready? Because in this time, I believe he's separating the children from the adults. And I'm not saying um, the adults physically. I'm saying mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Because a lot of us are still children. And I'm not talking about those who just accepted the Lord. I'm talking about the people who've been in church for 25, 35, 40 years and still are acting like like children. But he's saying, I can't, I can't work with children. I need to work with grown adults. I need to reveal stuff. Um, about your industry to you, but I need you to be mature and stably minded. He said, I need you to be stable. I need you to be mature. I need you to be grown. He's like, he's like, I love children. I love, I love new converts, but for the rest of you, I need you to be stable and to be grown because I cannot reveal my secrets or my or my ministry ideas for your industry or my thoughts about the world to you if you're not mature or stable. He's calling for mature and stable believers to rise up and really be soberly minded when it comes to the things of the kingdom. Yes, Lord, I bless you. I worship you, God. Lord Jesus, help us to be mature and stable, Lord Jesus, when it comes to the things of the kingdom. Jesus, we bless you. We want to receive your spirit we want to receive your power, Lord, but in order for us to do that, your power is expensive, your spirit is expensive. So we need to be mature and ready to receive what you have for us. We want things that sometimes we're not ready for. All those Salvation is a, is a free gift for everyone. Spiritual maturity is required for this hour. So grow us up, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. This generation will be filled with uncommon ministry. It will be filled with people expressing God's words, God's word in ways never seen before. Under the sound of my voice, there are people that are uncomfortable and they don't know why they're uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable because you're meant to minister the word of God in uncommon ways. And you're trying to figure out um, why don't I fit in? Why don't I do this? Why every time I try this, nothing works for me? 
he wants to tell he wants me to tell you the reason why that's not working for you the reason why you don't fit in the reason why you went to that church group and just didn't feel a part of it he's like I've made you an uncommon people I've even from other Christians you feel weird but he says don't worry I will use that weird feeling for my glory and he's like don't worry you're an uncommon person you're not common you're s separate like I've separated you for a specific purpose even among other other believers that even even among other ministry leaders I've separated you he's like I know it's lonely I know I just want to fit in but this too will bring me glory and at the end you you will see why I had to separate you loneliness for a season end up in my for my glory for a reason loneliness in a season will end up with my glory for a reason so there's a reason for this it's for the glory of God he says keep the faith he says don't get tired he's like don't give up because this this loneliness that you're feeling this isolation that you're feeling is just for time and it will end and it will end up to to be for his glory and you'll and you'll understand why you, you'll understand why someday but just hold on and even if you don't understand why right now keep walking don't give up just keep walking keep fighting keep striving god bless you see you next week guys bye